You've heard all about it, the crazy real estate market. Mad dash to buy homes, over list, crazy competition. But wait a second, something's changed. Something's different. And we're gonna talk about it right now. We're gonna cover the national scene and then stick around because we're gonna talk about Chester County and what's going on right now. And this is information you wanna know. With the market the way it has been, so many people are curious about it. I wanted to share with you a national perspective mostly. I wanna credit Gary Keller and his leadership team who presented this to us at a recent conference. This shows annual home sales. I want you to note that this year is on pace to be the fifth best year in recorded history of the industry. Even 2020 was tied for the fourth best year. And look at the trend. Notice uh, 2003 to 2004. That was a different situation with the mortgage industry. We have in place far more regulations during this current uptick in sales, but it's an economic cycle. Things go up and they go down. Experts predict that we could have a relatively flat year next year in 2022, which means it could be the sixth best year of all time. Next, take a look at the home prices. It's pretty incredible. The yellow line is the 4% historical trend line. We got back to the 4% line. It's a concern how fast that happened. 15% price increase in just one year. The last time we saw that was 2013 coming off the Great Recession. From 2019 to 2020, prices rose 13%. So that's almost 30% price increase in a 24 month period. Anytime you see prices going above the 4% line, eventually there will be a price correction. Look back to 2002. We went seven years before that correction happened. What will happen now remains a mystery, but the trend line never lies. We could go another four to five years above the trend line. This is a unique opportunity for homeowners recognizing the wealth they are building in their home. If you do intend to move, it, a lot depends on how long you intend to live there. If you plan to live there seven to eight years or more, you're good to go. 10 years, absolutely, which is actually the national average of how long people are staying in their homes right now. Look at the trend, seven years gets you out of anything. When people say prices are too high, I'm gonna wait. If they plan to stay seven or more years and wanna move, just buy now, you'll be fine. This is simply the way it has worked historically. You keep hearing that inventory is low and this shows the month's supply of inventory. In December, 2020, inventory dropped to the floor. Now we're back up to 2.6. Fortune Magazine predicts a 23% 23 increase in inventory by the end of the year. The number of homes in forbearance could add homes to the market as those come due, although many will just restructure and not sell. The good thing is as those numbers do rise, it helps sellers who've been on the fence because they're afraid they won't know where they're going to be able to buy. They might be more willing to sell. I'm often asked the question, do you think we'll have more listings? Well, this is a slide. Look at the purple line. That was last year. What a wonky year. But this year is the yellow and we're right on track with the seasonality. So things will drop off as we get toward the end of the year. This shows the new listings per agent, which has plummeted. There are a lot of agents right now. These numbers are per month. There are the same number of listings, just with more agents out there trying to sell them. Q2 
Keep in mind, a lot of agents represent buyers. And while people think, oh, this is a banner year for realtors, if you have buyers, it's not easy writing offer after offer and going through rejection. It's tough. Prices are one side of affordability and the other part is interest rates. They are at their all time low. This allows prices to be higher and still be affordable. We expect rates to go up, but I'm a little reluctant to commit to that because we've been saying it for years and yet the rates have not gone up except for a few brief upticks. The forecast is for 3.7% by the end of 2020. Two. When we entered the Great Recession, we had all kinds of creative financing, but now there's a ton of regulation that was not in place then. But we need to keep an eye out for creative financing, which to me is more of a red flag. When you start hearing about zero down rates, be cautious. Let's shift from the real estate market to the economy in general. This slide looks at GDP, which is all spending. All you have to do is look at the cliff um, at what happened with COVID and then look at the last four quarters. We're back. Now we're finding it's more of a shift to goods than services. There's quite an imbalance right now. Think about it. You didn't get your hair cut or go to the dry cleaner, but you sat at home and ordered stuff. So this is good news. When the GDP is above 2%, that's great. When it's at current levels, it is roaring. Let's take a look at consumer confidence. At its peak in March of 2018, we were over 100%, but we are at the lowest since they started measuring it. This Delta variant has a psychological effect on people who fear what's coming. We're on edge again. COVID has created uncertainty. We've lost confidence in human behavior. In my opinion, I think once we have this vaccination situation under control, things will start trending up. Take a look at unemployment. Remember, the number is 6% that the government looks at. If it's, uh, if it's unemployment is below 6%, then everything is headed in the right direction. So the current 4.8% is a great number. This slide compares our current comeback, if you will, with what happened during the Great Recession. The green line was the Great Recession where it took over six years to get back. This tells us the underlying economy is very strong right now. This is a health crisis, not an economic crisis. Let's take a look at unemployment a little further. This shows the number of job openings versus the unemployment rate. We are at an all-time high of 10.1 million at the end of June. With so many openings, this is going to drive up wages and people will get more benefits. It means people can move around from job to job. People will earn more and that costs businesses money and they start charging more. So let's talk about inflation. The purple line is 2%. The government looks at this line and says, if it's 2% or less, we are in check. And we are at 4%, so we have an issue. The number one tool they have in their toolbox is the cost of money. They will drive up the cost of money in order to slow everybody down. Current thinking is that what's affecting this very much is the supply chain issues. And once that those are under control, this number will come back down. But the Fed will be keeping a close eye on this. It's likely sometime next year they'll start tightening monetary policy. A big factor in this inventory shortage we're going through is new construction. Historically, there are about a million new starts in home construction. And after the Great Recession, we lost a decade of new construction. You would think that this would be skyrocketing, but developers are held back by local governments and all of their red tape, lack of skilled labor, and right now, uh, a lack of, or a supply chain issue. But that's winding down. All of this factors into affordability. 
the median income and medium home price were pretty much running lockstep. And then you can see where the divergence happened, the Great Recession. Prices started rising, got a lot higher than income, came back down a little, but then now we're off to the races and we're seeing the biggest disparity between the median income and medium home price. What this graph doesn't show, but it's very real, is that there's also a disparity in income. The top 20% are making far larger gains and are able to afford more, and they are pushing up the prices. Wages have lagged, but the interest rate has bridged the gap. Now wages will rise. Now let's dive into some industry topics. While experiencing remote work, you can see that education is the least affected and professional and business service are the most affected. That would, that would be legal, accounting, engineering, real estate. They're the most affected with 45% of the people back in their office. As demand shows up, those that are the most physical jobs have to be there. I think you'll find this interesting. This is foot traffic, retail, um, grocery, and gyms, and gyms really plummeted, and they're still not back up to their pre-COVID level, but you know, groceries have rebounded as have uh, retail. Notice the e-commerce trend. It was a very slow and steady rise from the year 2000, and all of a sudden COVID hit and bam, it's way up. But what's interesting is it's staying there, it's steady it's not going away. As far as the change uh, to e-commerce, look at the grocery industry. Before COVID, it was at whatever, 10%. Now, all of a sudden, COVID hits and it doubles. And what's interesting is it hasn't gone back. People have adopted that. Whereas home goods, you know, there was a, a spike in e-commerce, but it's kind of come back. And the same is true with apparel. I personally really want to see it, touch it, feel it, and try it on. So our world has changed. The same is true in real estate. Things are just getting more and more technology-based. Let's take a look at the local real estate market in Chester County. This shows the number of new listings in Chester County year to date in 2021. And you can see that we're just a little over 1,300 listings at its maximum. Compare that to 2015 when listings, the number of new listings was closer to 1,600, just over 1,570. This shows the sale price to list price ratio. So, you know, people are talking about things being over list price. And this shows that, you know, the average is well over 100%. And it traditionally, you, you know, used to be much less than list price. This shows the days on market. And you can see that has really plummeted from the traditional um, time frame. These are the statistics we've been talking about, but there's something beyond that. Sometimes statistics are not the entire story. And what we're finding is it's just a feeling almost that we talk about as realtors and things are slowing down. It's not every house. You get a great house, a gorgeous home, all updated to the nines in a great location. You're gonna have multiple offers. But if it's just not perfect, if it needs a little work, if it's a little tired, sometimes we're seeing them sit on the market. We're seeing more price drops now than for a long, long time. I want to share some information with you. In terms of price drops right now, there are 73. I'm, I just drilled in on Downingtown schools, but this just representative of the, the Chester County. Of the 73 active listings, 31 have had price drops. Of those under contract, 125 under contract, 25 had price drops. Of those that lingered on the market, and I say lingered like 
more than two weeks, about half of them, uh, 15 out of 27, had price drops. And for those that closed in the last 60 days, which is, you know, we going back even, you know, 90 days is too long ago. Even 60 might be too long ago because this is kind of a really current thing. Um, we had... 39 of the 239 that closed had price drops. So that's not too much. But um, of the those that were on the market a little longer, 21 out of 39. So again, half had price drops. I also thought you'd be interested that the home that sold the lowest amount under list price was 28%. It was listed for $499,900 and ultimately sold for $360,000 after 86 days. And the one that went the highest, and granted this is Downingtown Schools and I could find you numbers that would blow this out of the water uh, in Chester County, but this was, it sold for 20.6% over list price. So in real numbers, it was listed for $500,000 and sold for $603,000. So uh, stay in touch if you have any more questions about the market. If you'd like to know about your house, just reach out. Ann Byer, Keller Williams.